August 23, 2010. Disgruntled former Philippine National Police Officer Rolando Mendoza hijacked a tourist bus in Rizal Park, Manila, Philippines. The bus carried 25 people. Ten hours into the standoff, police would arrest Mendoza's brother after inciting him to open fire upon the hostages. The driver of the bus escaped, declaring everyone is dead as he was rushed off to safety. After a long and dangerous gun battle, Mendoza and the hostages lay dead, with several others injured. After investigation by both the Philippine and Hong Kong governments, both inquiries came back stating, Philippine officials' poor handling of the situation was responsible for the loss of eight hostages, and the situation was widely criticized, claiming it to be bungled, as well as incompetent, resulting in the Hong Kong government issuing a black travel alert for the Philippines. September 11, 2001, New York City. Two hijacked Boeing 767 passenger planes were sent crashing into the north and south towers of the World Trade Center complex. Both towers would fall within an hour and a half, and even though countless people in the streets witnessed the strikes, few would think to capture them on video. With only one man, documentary filmmaker Jules Naudet, capturing the only known footage of the initial impact start to finish. This disaster would come to cause 6,000 non-fatal injuries and 2,996 deaths, in which 2,977 were victims and 19 were hijackers. April 29th, 1992. There was a riot on the streets. Tell me, where were you? Lyrics to Miami by Sublime. A song written about the South Central riots following the acquittal of police officers on trial regarding the police brutality and racism backed by video evidence. The result, a six-day riot, bringing with it loots, arson, injury, civil disturbance, and deaths. 11,000 arrested, a little more than 2,000 injuries, and 53 deaths. These routes would be the largest riots the United States has faced since 1967, with property damage around $1 billion. The rioting would come to an end after members of the California Army National Guard, the 7th Infantry Division, and the 1st Marine Division got called upon to step in and handle the situation. After obtaining a search warrant for the Mount Carmel Center, a compound owned by the religious group Branch Davidian, the last thing the ATF expected was a full tilt firefight, but that's what they got during the 51-day siege of the property, ending when the compound caught fire and collapsed, in which 76 people, some pregnant, aging 1 to 55 years of age, would die. Autopsies of the dead reveal some women and children died from skull injuries, other children found locked in the brutal throes of death, oftentimes consistent with cyanide poisoning, as well as other causes such as burning of CS gas. Autopsy reports also go on record stating that at least 20 Branch Davidians were shot, including five children under the age of 14. On November 22, 1963, John F. Kennedy, his wife Jacqueline Kennedy, Texas Governor John Connolly, and his wife Nellie traveled in a motorcade in the presidential limousine, heading for a meeting with Democratic Party members. President Kennedy would only make it as far as Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas. There, President Kennedy would receive two gunshots, one to the back and the other in the head. Lee Harvey Oswald would be arrested shortly after as the suspected assassin and after a 10-month investigation by the Warren Commission, a conclusion would be reached in which it is said Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone in the shooting of Kennedy. This assassination by shooting would mark the fourth successful assassination attempt of an American president. As if straight out of a movie, wanted felon Jordan F. Romero would take police on a high-speed chase before shooting himself in the head on national television. In 2012, Fox News was broadcasting the case of Romero using news helicopters from Phoenix, Arizona affiliate KSAZ-TV. As the chase came to an end, Romero fled from his vehicle on foot, leaving local anchor Shepard Smith, who is notorious for his car chase commentary, with little to say. Except, I don't know, look at this, he's just running. Oh my, well, it looks like he's a little disappointed. And, it's possible he could be onto something. Suddenly, Romero puts a handgun to his head and pulled the trigger. As gasps filled the Fox News control room, the broadcast went out, horrifying thousands of viewers. 
On January 8, 1986, American shuttle orbiter the Challenger launched, despite the warning of cold temperatures. Then, 73 seconds after takeoff, the shuttle broke apart and exploded into a plume of smoke and fire, killing the seven crew members inside. This tragedy was viewed by millions, who watched awestruck with disbelief as the burning wreckage fell into the Atlantic Ocean. In addition to the already shocking and unfortunate impact was the death of Krista McAuliffe, a civilian high school teacher who was on board the Challenger. She'd earned a spot through NASA's Teacher in Space program. The tragedy would cause a two-year hiatus of all NASA operations. Flights wouldn't resume again until September of 1988. Getting away with murder isn't easy. At least it shouldn't be. But if you're O.J. Simpson, it appears to be just that. Millions of viewers tuned in to watch the trial of alleged murderer O.J. Simpson, which unfolded live on TV, resulting in an amazing display of mockery of America's judicial system. Prior to the trial news, cameras would cover a very slow speed chase involving Simpson, in which began the start of his infamous antics soon after. The trial took place over a 12-month period, during which many questionable occurrences happened. OJ's defense team, led by Johnny Cochran, was able to convince the jury of his innocence. The evidence presented spawning the famous line, it doesn't fit, you must acquit. In reference to the glove Simpson supposedly wore while he killed his wife, somehow in the end, OJ was found innocent and was set free, proving once again, a little bit of fame and a lot of money just may be all you need in life.